Hey everybody, Neil Malik with Knack Training here bringing you another everyday office video. And in today's video, I want to demonstrate how the choose function works. If you notice the tabs down in the bottom left hand corner of my screen, you'll notice uh, the next video I'm going to record is about ifs and the one after that is about switch. These are two functions that are new in Office 365 where choose has been around for a little while. They each work very similarly, but they allow for different types of situations. So what is the choose function and what does it allow us to accomplish in a spreadsheet? If you go to the formulas tab at the top of the screen, under lookup and reference, you'll find choose in there. Notice that choose is under lookup and reference where ifs, which we'll use uh, in the next video, is under the logical drop down menu. So it's interesting that they're so similar, but they go into two different families here. Choose, as you can see here, asks you for the index number and gives you different values back in return. So the basic concept here is that if you are able to give it a number value, one, two, three, four, five, it will give you back the value in that position. So let's go ahead and choose the choose option here. And the first item is what is the index number? Now, as you can see over here on the left, I've given you really simple, right? One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> so I'm choose the one here in cell B2. And for value number one, what happens when I give it a one? Well, as you can see here, what I'm trying to go for is the ordinal. So here, what I can do is I can say, if you give me the number one, I can give you back quotation marks, one ST, close quotation marks. And then what if I give you a two? I could give you quotation marks, two ND, close quotation marks. And what happens if I give you a three? And you can see what I'm going to do from here on out. I could also have done this with concatenation, but this is just as simple. I'll go ahead and click OK here, and as you can see, it gives me first all the way down to ninth. You definitely wouldn't want to have to do this for every number, um, but what you could do is take the last digit off of numbers and give you, you know, the last digit is a 1, so it ends in ST, etc. Okay, so that's one way of handling it. Again, if you give it a number value, it'll then say, is this the first position, the second position, the third position, the fourth position, the fifth position? Now, I actually have a client who just asked me if it was possible to randomly assign people to groups. And this is a very easy way to make that happen. So as you can see here, I've got about, uh, about 30 people who need to be broken up into teams. And let's say these are teams of five, so I'll give them six groups, okay? So again here, I won't go to the formulas tab to make this happen. Instead, I'll just do equal sign choose. Now at this point, if I want to randomly assign them to groups, then it makes sense that I would use the function rand between. Rand between is different from rand. Rand gives you a different random numbers between zero and one. Rand between tells you, okay, give me a, a bottom and a top. And so if I say there are gonna be six groups, the random generator is one comma six close quotation, excuse me, close parentheses. And then if I give you a one, then maybe you're on quotation marks here, team A. And if I give you a two, you're on team B. And if I give you a three, you're on team C. And if I give you a four, you're on team D. A five, you're on team E. And a six, you're on team F. Close parentheses. And as you can see there, I can now autofill this down and I see that Robin has been assigned to team D and Jimena has been assigned to team A. So going back to this is this very important point. The choose function, which has been around for a very long time, requires you feed it a number. 
a number between one and some high-end number, and then to specify each of the different positions. If it's the one, this is the first position. If it's two, this is the second position. Same thing happened here, except I used a random number generator to give me numbers between one and six. If it's the first position, if it's the second position, third position, fourth position, etc. This is different from something like ifs or something like switch because those two functions allow you to make judgment calls and come back with whether something is true or not. Whereas this tells me just give me the number of the position you're looking for. So sometimes you have to come up with interesting calculations to spit out that number.